everyone, this is Delene with McDonald's Sewing and Vacuum, and I'm going to do a tutorial today on how to create your own heirloom recipe towels. Uh, you've got a picture uh, in front of you here of my siblings from a previous Christmas, and um, I had made for them tea towels with this cranberry salad that my grandmother used to make. And then my mother made it, and now my sister-in-law makes it for all the holidays. And it's kind of a joke. Uh, Daryl was teasing my sister-in-law, Teresa, who's on the left, about spending all the time and effort to make this salad. And, you know, really not very many people like it. But it's such a great tradition, we can't quite let it go. So we appreciate Teresa for continuing it. Anyway, I'm going to show you here soon how to start this off in the software. Uh, the first thing I suggest you do is type the text of your recipe into a word processor that you feel comfortable using. It's easier, I think, to cut and paste or copy and paste longer pieces of text into the software than to type it directly in. So I have highlighted, I'm going to highlight with my mouse cranberry salad. That's going to be the title of my recipe and I'm going to use the control C command to copy that to my clipboard and then once I come over then I'm going to go down to my text um, taskbar excuse me and select Premiere Plus 2 and then once the software comes up I'm going to click on the letter tab and click in this text box letters box and use the control V command to paste that title cranberry salad into that box um, from my clipboard. Now I'm going to go search for a font that I like and um, I want something fancy for this title so I'm going to choose this old English um, font and I'm going to leave it at 14 millimeters for now. If I wanted to change the shape I could if I wanted to make a rounded shape or something like that but for this recipe towel, I would just want the title to be a traditional horizontal block. And then I'm going to have it center it in that. It's only one line of text, so it doesn't matter, but I'm going to leave it centered right there and click on apply. And there's my cranberry salad text. And I'm going to bring that up to the top of the hoop. I'm using, by the way, a 200 by 260 size hoop. Now I'm going to um, go back over to my uh, word processor and I'm going to select the ingredients. So I'm just going to use my mouse, highlight that, and again use Control C, then come back over to Premiere Plus 2, click in the letters box, highlight those letters because I'm just going to copy this right over it. I'm going to click Control V. Oops, I didn't actually copy it. That happens sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to highlight here and control C and once again back to Premiere Plus, select the letters box and control B. B. Good, that time I got my letters. This time I'm going to choose a smaller font. I want something small and really simple so I can fit all of this text in here. So I'm going to go all the way down to the traditional fonts that are at the bottom. I'm using Premiere Plus 2 Ultra. It'll, you'll have fewer fonts if you're in any of the other versions of this software. Um, and I'm going to choose this uh, Georgia 8 to 20 millimeters um, font because I think I'm going to like the way that looks. This time I am going to change the alignment to left justified because I have more than one line of text. And I'm going to click apply. Okay, now there it is. Now it looks great, but I think it's a little too big for the hoop. Do you see it's outside that grid? So I'm just going to drag it in a little bit. And there's some more work that I'd like to do on these letters, but I think I'm going to do that in a separate video. Um, the only thing is there's a little extra space here and more space here than I like and some here. So I want to bring all that together, but I'm not going to do that. We're just going to get the basic thing going and then I'll do a separate video on, on editing that kind of thing. Sorry, I clicked in the wrong place. Okay, 
<laughs> I'm going to go back to letter. I've deleted those letters from the box there. So I'm going to go back to my word screen and I'm going to, I've copied the letters, the words for the instructions into um, another document. And I've made sure that I use the carriage return uh, after each line as I want it to show up on the um, tea towel. So I'm going to copy that and I've you know, I kind of played around with this before. I'm going to paste it into um, into the letters box. And then I'm going to use the same font and click apply. So now I've got my instructions. I want to leave a little space at the bottom for um, my grandmother's name. So I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to delete all of that text from before. And I'm going to go back into my fonts. And this time I want to get a font that looks kind of like might have been her signature. So I kind of like this uh, Patricia font here. So I'm going to select that. And her name was B. Wagner. Oops. And I'm going to make this about 15 millimeters, I think. We'll see if I like that. And again, because it's a single line of text, I don't have to worry about it, uh, the alignment on it. Oh yeah, I really like that, and it almost even looks like her signature. So there we go. I've got my design all ready to go, except for maybe some spacing, but it doesn't look too bad. All right, so that's the recipe. Now, I thought it just looked kind of plain, so I actually went to... Um, I think I got it from Embroidery Library. So I'm going to go to the File tab and come down here to the Insert command. And I'm going to look for this design. And I know it's in my Embroidery File folder. And I'm pretty sure I got it from Embroidery Library. So I'm going to double click on that folder and Look, and there it is, there are my cranberries. So I'm gonna bring that design in. So what insert does is it inserts a design, exactly like it says, into a project that I'm already working on or into a, um, hmm, Delane. Hello, Delane, Earth to Delane. There it is, I was looking for that handle that would let me rotate it a little more. So I'm going to rotate this around until it looks kind of the way I want it to look. may have to move. I'm going to move some of this down just a little bit further. Yeah, so I can squeeze the cranberry design in there. And I might make it just a little smaller. Oh, I kind of like it the way that is. Let me click out of it. Nope, it needs to be. It needs to be a little bit smaller. So bring it in just a little, try not to change the design much. Rotate it maybe a little bit more so it'll all fit. There we go. Okay, so now I've got the cranberries in there and I think it looks pretty nice. I'd probably play around with this a little more until I was happier, but I think for the most part that's what I want. Okay. Now I'm going to save this and I'm, I usually save uh, my designs as uh, a VP4 file to begin with. I've already got one version of this out there so I'm going to name this Cranberry2. The reason I want to save it as a .vp4 file is that if I decide I want to come in and change fonts or um, work on those letters and squeeze them together a little bit more in some of the areas, it will be useful for me to have it in this uh, VP4 format because all of that editing capability will be in the file. I'm also now going to export the design and what this does is it helps create better stitching, it combines stitches, removes overlaps, does a good color sort for me and then optimizes the stitch length. So I figure the software is usually smarter than I am, so I'm going to let it do all that. Now I'm going to use the VP3 file because that's what I use to stitch on my Epic, but um, we also have several other 
file formats available for other machines. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and I'm going to save that and it's now out there as a VP3 file. The next thing I'm going to do just because it's fun <laughs> and I still think this is so cool so I'm going to go up to file and click on send to my machine via my Sonet and I'm going to click on have it send it to my designer epic and just like magic it's going to send it over there and I'll be able to stitch it out on my machine without having to save it to a USB drive. And there we go. It tells me it was sent to my machine. I'm going to send the VP3 file for my recipe towel to my directly to the Epic from my software. And it should just appear on the screen here in a minute. And there it is. Pretty cool, huh?